Be sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Were you cracking up? I didn't yeah. want to look. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gearheads. Hannah's out on maternity leave, so today I'm very excited to be joined by ATK Review's deputy editor, Kate Shannon. Thanks for having me, Lisa. Now today we're gonna talk about pieces of cookware that we feel are a little underrated. Should you buy specialized gear like saucers and saute pans, or are you better off with kitchen essentials like saucepans and skillets? We'll break down all the options so you can make the right call for yourselves. But first, we have a book coming out. It's called Kitchen Gear, The Ultimate Owner's Manual. The two of us have 30 years of combined experience testing kitchen gear, and we've packed all of our favorite tips and tricks into this book. We give you our unbiased take on what's worth buying and what's not. Plus, you'll find over 100 ATK recipes that bring out the best in your gear. Get your copy of Kitchen Gear, The Ultimate Owner's Manual today. Here's Kate with a look at saucers. Mention the word saucier in the test kitchen and you're in for an earful. People love these things. They're basically rounded saucepans with wider mouths and flared walls. They can do everything a saucepan can do, but their unique design traits mean that cooking some things like pastry cream, caramel, even your morning oatmeal is gonna be a little bit easier. Remember that all the gear we're talking about today is linked down below, right by that like button. And this is not an ad. We've tested and reviewed everything we're talking about. Saucier is also the name given to French cooks who make sauces, stocks, and soups. These vessels are great for that. They have rounded sides, which means that it's really easy to stir and things don't scorch as easily because they can't get caught in those corners. The most similar piece of cookware to a saucier is a saucepan. This is our favorite saucepan from Allclad, and this is our favorite saucier from Le Creuset. These are both great pans. They're used for a lot of the same things and they do have a lot of things in common. Both have really nice, big, broad cooking surfaces. There's lots of room to get around, make sure everything cooks really evenly. They also have really nice, comfortable handles. Whether you're standing at the cooktop or if you're carrying it to the sink, you're carrying it around your kitchen, you can really trust that you're gonna have a good grip and feel comfortable. But as you can tell, they both have some key differences. The saucepan has really tall L-shaped walls. And that means that it has these sort of corners down here. And that's not a bad thing. You can definitely make really great food in here but it means that food can kind of get trapped in this corner. So with this, you have to pay a little attention. In a saucier, the great thing about it is that it has these really sloped, rounded walls, and there really aren't any corners in here. That means that the odds of something getting stuck here is basically zero. And when it comes to cleaning, there are some differences here too. The same thing with the walls and, and the corner means that you might really have to scrub. With a saucier, those rounded edges mean that cleanup is really easy. The composition of these pans is pretty similar. Both are fully clad stainless steel, and that means that they're gonna be quick to heat up, they're gonna be reactive to temperature changes, but the stainless steel that you're cooking on is not reactive. So they're both really user-friendly. So what makes a good saucier? This has a pretty broad cooking surface. Some of the models we tested were smaller, and when you're stirring, you feel kind of cramped. And if the cooking surface is too big, that means all your food is spread out into a thin layer. It's a little harder to control, more likely to burn. Number two is a nice, sturdy handle. This one's really comfortable, which means when you're cooking, you feel secure. Some of the saucers we tested had really weird handles. They came up at super awkward angles, or they were really sharp on the sides and kind of dug into our hands. And pretty much everyone agreed that this was a good handle. This also has a helper handle. It's not essential, but it is kind of nice when you're carrying it around your kitchen. Number three, and this is really what sets a saucier apart, is the shape of the walls. They're low, they're flared, and there are no sharp corners down here. Another really important factor is weight. This is really the sweet spot. It's two pounds, 12 ounces. Can a saucier replace a saucepan? Probably not. There are some things it does really well. Anytime you're whisking or stirring a lot, these are great, but they're pricey pans. And everything you can do in a saucier, you can do in a saucepan. Saucepans are just more common, but I have one of these at home and I use it all the time. Once you have one and you start using it, you really appreciate all these little differences and see how much they add up. Now here's Lisa with her favorite piece of underrated cookware, the saute pan. 
So what is a saute pan? A saute pan is a cross between a skillet and a saucepan. They usually come with lids. They are nice and wide and have high L-shaped sides. And they're great for browning and searing, for shallow frying, for braising, and yeah, even for sauteing. So here at ATK, saute pans are a little bit overlooked because we will often push the recipes you'd want to do in this into either a skillet or a Dutch oven. We try not to tell you you need to buy every single pan there is. That being said, there's a lot of times when this is really the best pan for the job. A saute pan's closest relative is a skillet. This is our winning skillet by Allclad, and this is our winning saute pan by Made In. These have a lot of things in common and a few key differences. They're both made of stainless steel and they're fully clad. So they have stainless steel, aluminum, and stainless steel sheets that are bonded together before the pan is made. So you get nice even cooking with no hot spots. But then you have to really look at these shapes and that's how they perform differently on the stove. They both have a wide cooking surface but then that skillet has those low flaring sides that bow out like this. This is great for browning nicely and encouraging evaporation with those low sides. The saute pan, L-shaped sides, taller and straighter. You've got a higher side, you've got a big domed lid. You can hold a lot of food in there and without anything spilling. This is gonna be great for braising where you wanna simmer and it's gonna hold in lots of food. Both pans can be used on the stove or in the oven because they're fully metal and the handles are both just plain stainless steel. The saute pan, because it often has heavier food and liquid, has a helper handle here. So what made a great saute pan? When we tested a full lineup of these, we did choose all ones that were fully clad. This one really did stand out from the pack because it had a few things that we loved. One is that the cooking surface is nice and broad. This is really important because if it's too narrow, meat is crowded when you're browning it. So this broad cooking surface really did matter. Greens cooked quicker because they could be spread into a thinner layer. The other thing that mattered was the height of the sides. These are about two and a half inches. The pans in our lineup range from two to three inches. And actually the higher sides were not that helpful. It was harder to reach in with tongs to get at those meatballs or to stir anything. Basically halfway to a saucepan. The third thing we really loved was this low handle. It was a nice level handle and it was comfortable to grip, has this little bit of a dent in it that really helps you grab it when you're pouring out sauces and things. It actually stays rooted in your hand. Can this saute pan replace a skillet? I would have to say not really. There's some things that a skillet is really terrific at, specifically the browning, a saute pan, which is really designed to hold a lot more food. If I had to go to a deserted island with either this or my skillet, I'm still kind of a skillet person. So if you've already got a great skillet and a great saucepan, but you're looking to expand a little bit to a little bit more specialty cookware, definitely check out the saute pan and the saucier that Kate talked about. For more information on all the gear we talked about today, check out the links below or go to americastestkitchen.com. Do you think a saucier or saute pan is worth it? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode.